Hi there. This lecture is dedicated to failover. You will learn what it is and how to do it. In this lecture, you should learn how to do the following. Describe data guard failover. Failover to a physical standby database using the SQL plus. Failover to a logical standby database using the SQL plus. Failover using the broker. Reinstate the primary database after failover using SQL plus. And reinstate the primary database after failover using the broker. Failover is an action that you need to take if an issue happens that requires moving the production database to the standby database. It is therefore an unplanned event. When you decide to fail over, the primary database is assumed to be unavailable. Right after you fail over to a standby database, the new primary database will always run in maximum performance mode. To upgrade the mode, you need either to reinstate the failed old primary database or create a new standby database. In case of failover, the primary database is considered as unavailable and therefore you don't do most of the preparatory steps that you would do in case of switch over. You only make sure that there is no scheduler job or RMAN session running in the standby database and you may open a session to monitor the alert log file. If your data guard configuration is managed by SQL Plus, you start the failover with stopping the MRP process. Then you execute the command alter database failover as shown in the slide. In case of a logical standby database, a single command will do the trick. Alter database, activate logical standby database, finish apply. This statement stops the remote file server process, applies remaining redo data in the standby redo log file before the logical standby database becomes a primary database, stops SQL apply, and activates the database in the primary database role. After a failover is finished, the original primary database can no longer participate in the data guard configuration until it is repaired and established as a standby database in the new configuration. The process of converting a failed primary database into a standby database after failover is called reinstatement. To reinstate a failed primary database, the flashback database must be enabled. Otherwise, you have to recreate the standby database from scratch. The procedure to reinstate the primary database after failover to a physical standby database is as follows. First, obtain the SCN at which the standby database became the primary database. Flash the database back to the obtained SCN. Restart it to mount state. Then start the MRP process. The reinstate procedure after failing over to a logical standby database is different from it when you reinstate to a physical standby database. This is simply because the SCN number in the primary database is not the same as the SCN number in the logical standby database. First, you have to get the flashback SCN and the processed change from the DBA log STDBY history view as shown in the slide. The flashback SCN is the SCN to which the failed primary database will be flashed back. The recovery SCN is the SCN to which the failed primary database will be recovered. Secondly, flash the database back to the flashback SCN and remount the database as shown in the slide. In the third step, 
you make sure that the file server parameter is point to the new primary database. After that, you remove the divergent archive logs. Those are the archive logs created at the time of or after the failover operation. Then you recover the database until the recovery is CN number. In the sixth step, you enable the database guard. Then you activate the physical standby database to become a primary database. Finally, you create a database link in the new standby database that will connect to the new primary database. You use this link to start the standby apply process in the new standby database. After that, the role reversal process is finished. It does look like a long procedure, but it is actually systematic. As with switching over, failing over using the broker is very easy. You use the validate database command to make sure that the standby database that you want to fail over to is ready for failing over. Then you simply issue the command fail over to standby database name. And that's it. The broker will take care of the rest. In the background, the broker will wait for the target standby database to finish applying any unapplied RIDO data. It will then stop the apply process and proceed with the actions to make the standby database the new primary database of your configuration. If you want to reinstate your old primary database after failing over using the broker, the broker is again making your life easy here. All what you have to do is issue a single command, reinstate database, and the broker will take care of the rest. If you strictly followed the same procedure as described in this course to build up your data guard configuration databases, the command should complete successfully and you should have the old primary database up and running again. However, sometimes the broker asks you to remount the database and issue the reinstate command again. So here we go. We reach to the end of this lecture. You should have learned how to do the following. Describe data guard failover. Fail over to a physical standby database using SQL plus. Fail over to a logical standby database using SQL plus. Fail over using the broker. Reinstate the primary database after failing over using SQL plus. Reinstate the primary database after fail over using the broker. The next lecture is a practice. We will perform the role transitions. We will perform both the switch over and fail over. Thanks for joining me and see you in the next lecture.